With the 2021-22 NBA season now in full swing, basketball fans can finally glue themselves to their seats and celebrate their favorite teams. That being said, only the biggest of fans can pay attention to every little detail, so we're here to ensure that you're up to date with the latest in NBA headlines, like what's going on with Robert Sarver and who else has been making waves. For all this and more, stay tuned. Number one, Robert Sarver and the creation of his toxic work environment. First up on our list is the number one story on everyone's lips at the moment, which has everything to do with the setting of the sun over Phoenix's very own owner, Robert Sarver. For those of you who don't know, Sarver's currently facing a number of allegations rooted in misogyny and racism, with an ESPN report detailing these incidents describing his 17-year ownership over the suns as one of hostile toxicity. According to Sarver, there is absolutely no truth to the report released by the network. In fact, the longtime owner has already issued a preemptive denial of every allegation contained within the report, stating that this story is based on nothing but lies, innuendo, and a false narrative. He also mentioned that the report in question was likely aimed at the attacking of the Phoenix Suns rather than him in his personal capacity, which is a bit difficult to understand in all honesty. Where did the report come from, though? Was it the statement of a singular disgruntled employee, or are we looking at something bigger here. Well, as it turns out, Sarver will have his work cut out for him in the coming days. You see, the report is based on information collected from the interview of more than 70 current and former Suns employees, all of whom have pointed him out for being misogynistic, racist, and ultimately creating a toxic work environment. To truly know what to think, you'll need to know the specifics, though. What specifically is Sarver accused of? Since the report is based on so many allegations of toxicity, it can be hard to wrap your head around everything that Sarver has apparently done. But let's take a look at some of the most damning evidence against him. Probably one of the most harrowing experiences brought up by an employee in the report is how Sarver was heard aggressively addressing a black coach of the Suns by making use of the N-word more than once. Historically speaking, this is a word that was used by slave owners to retain control over and separate themselves from their slaves. So it goes without saying that the white 60-year-old owner shouldn't be speaking to his employees this way. But if Sarver is to be believed, the N-word has never been in his vocabulary. So it's really a he said, she said situation right now as to whether the incident actually took place. Sarver also apparently loves talking about his personal relationship with his wife. In fact, quite a few former employees recounted the time he showed off a photograph of her in a bikini and described how it felt to have sex with her. Not exactly the most appropriate of conduct. And finally, Sarver was also called out for his misogynistic treatment of women over the years. According to the report, he once asked a woman if he owned her when a Inquiring whether she worked for the Suns or not. But what have others said on the matter? Have others in the NBA experienced Robert Sarver like this? We know that Sarver has denied every single allegation to date, but you might not be surprised to hear that other high-ranking members of the organization have his back. The Phoenix Suns general manager, James Jones, and team president, Jason Rowley, have both defended Sarver by stating that he has always been a great owner who treats employees with dignity and respect. They also went on to call the ESP ESPN report completely outrageous and false, going even further by referring to the allegations and specifics and concluding that Sarver is not a racist and he's not a sexist. Mark Bass, who just so happens to be the NBA spokesman, also went on to tell ESPN that the league hasn't received any complaints filed against Sarver in respect to these allegations. The same was said by Michelle Roberts, the NBA Players Union executive. This is good news for Sarver, but considering how 70 current and prior employees have spoken out against him, things are still going to be tough. In fact, we've already seen how high-ranking officials have stood up for celebrities like Harvey Weinstein and Ellen DeGeneres in the last few years, despite them being guilty of their individual crimes or negligence. What are the consequences for Sarver, though? Well, look back to 2014, and you'll remember that Donald Sterling, owner of the Clippers, was fined $2.5 million and banned for life from the NBA for using racist language. 
Suffice to say, Sarver could be next. Number two, good news for the Golden State Warriors. But it's not all bad news today as it turns out the luck of the Golden State Warriors may very well be turning with Klay Thompson being cleared for five-on-five -five workouts in the coming days. For those of you who don't know, the shooting guard hasn't played a game for the team since the beginning of the 2019 NBA Finals. And since the injury was on his knee and Achilles tendon, goes without saying that fans haven't been holding their breath for his return. According to Steve Kerr, Thompson went on to play a five-on-five -five practice session back in San Francisco on Monday and is expected to do the same in the coming days. In addition of Thompson on the team for the upcoming match against Cleveland would be a game changer. And there's no doubt that his appearance would solidify the Warriors at the top of the Western Conference. That being said, fans of Thompson shouldn't get their hopes up just yet. A two-year absence must be treated with more work than any of us can ever imagine, after all. And although it's good to hear that Thompson has been cleared for these five-on-five -five sessions, the man still has a pretty long road ahead of him. Put him on the court in front of a number of screaming fans too soon and he might injure himself for good. After all, bringing a lucrative career to an end. So let's see what these practice sessions bring us. Number three, the Mavericks have been hit with some bad luck early on. Unfortunately for the Dallas Mavericks, though, things aren't looking too great right now. It all took place a few days ago when their own superstar, Luka Doncic, suffered an injury with just 44 seconds remaining on the clock in the match between the Mavericks and Phoenix. After contesting a driving layup by Austin Rivers of the Suns, Doncic found himself landing off balance, which caused his lower left leg to bend back pretty awkwardly. Suffice to say, the man has been ruled out with a sprained ankle, which shouldn't surprise fans considering how many ankles have been sprained in the past. As of right now, it looks like he'll only be missing out on the next two consecutive games for his team, so it doesn't look like his injury is all too bad. That being said, we have to remember the time a sprained ankle led to a seven-game absence back in 2019, and if his recovery is not as quick as the health staff believe, it goes without saying that the Dallas Mavericks are going to find themselves between a rock and a hard place, not exactly the way a team wants to start their 2021-22 season. And this is even worse news for the Slovenian player who was able to already achieve his first triple-double of the season two games ago, and already has a season-high 15 assists to his name. In other words, fans hope the injury won't take the wind out of his sails. Number four, Staples Center is soon to be no more. Last but not least, we have some big news for Los Angeles Lakers fans who have come to appreciate the joy of Staples Center over the years. According to reports, the iconic arena is in the process of being renamed, with the name change being made official come December 25th. What's the reasoning behind this change, though? Well, as it turns out, this is everything to do with money, with the stadium set to be called the Crypto.com Arena starting Christmas of this year. An insider of the details to the deal has disclosed that Crypto.com is paying approximately $700 million US dollars over a period of 20 years to get the building renamed in its favor. And if this is true, the contract would be considered to be the richest naming rights deal in the history of sports. That being said, this should all be taken with a pinch of salt, especially since the insider is staying anonymous until things become concretized. Either way, it looks like Stable Center is going to be no more, which is a sad day for the NBA. And there you have it, the NBA headlines all fans should be aware of right now. What do you think of the allegations made against Robert Sarver, though? And should Stable Center really be changing its name? Feel free to let us know in the comments section down below.